Hey, I'm Peachy, and in this video we're going to be showing you how to paint the navy breaches from the Into the Dark Kill Team set. Now this is part one of a three part series where we'll take you through how to paint absolutely everything within the Into the Dark box set. That includes obviously the Galadark scenery as well as the Kroot. So grab your navy armsman and get ready to repel borders. Welcome to the painting phase. So the aim of this series of videos is to take you through how to paint your Into the Dark set with minimal fuss, so making your teams and your scenery look efficient and smart with minimal effort. I wanted to do something a bit different with my navy breeches, and I've had a lot of requests on how I've painted my Voidsman at Arms that you may have seen on Instagram and Twitter. So what I'm gonna do here is basically take you through how I painted those, so I'm killing two birds with one bolt round. As there's been a whole swathe of new paints added to the Citadel range, such as contrasts, I'm going to take you through how I'd paint those Voidsmen now. Also, what we're going to do is start off getting our models up to a certain point, and after that, we're going to make them a little bit smarter by adding some highlights after that. So let's crack on. Starting from a grey sear undercoat, what we're now going to do is pick out those red tunics using bowl red. Now don't worry if you make any splodges or errors here, we can easily fix this later on. After that what we're going to do is pick out the blue trousers with Stormfiend. If you do find you've got any red on those trousers, just get some grey sear and just tie it back up before you apply the Stormfiend. Next up is using Black Legion. When coating the black details with Black Legion, don't worry if there is any red or blue on these sections as it's a fantastic paint and will easily cover those areas. so much. Who needs a bad and black anymore when I have you? I know technically you're from the same faction, but that's not, that's not the point. With all those areas blacked out, what we're now going to do is pick out the gold trim and any of the gold details with Retributor Armour. Again, just thin it down a little bit, just for ease of application. Next, we're going to coat over the weapons using Balthazar Gold. At this point, don't be too concerned about neatness because we can always tie it back up with a little bit of iron hand steel after. And as I just said, we're now going to apply iron hand steel over those silver details. Again, you might want to do a second coat just on the same side. And now we're going to pick out the trim in Avalan Sunset and don't forget the badge on the left arm as well. When painting faces, use whichever skin tone you wish. Here I'm using Blood Reaver Flesh, Catachan Flesh and Cadian Flesh Tone to get a nice mix of skin tones across the unit. At this point you'll probably find you've got a few bits and bobs over that white armour. So what we're going to do now is just tidy up that armour using grey skin. Grey skin. <laughs> the next step and my favourite part is we're going to be getting Nornor and we're going to apply this all over the miniature. So we're going to start from the top and work our way down. When applying your shades all over the model, just be mindful and just to check over those models as it starts to work its way down, because it might start to pull in some of those recesses you don't want it to. So just get a brush, dry it off, and just soak off any of that excess. Once the Norn Oil is dry, we're gonna apply Seraphim Sepia to the white armor to give it a warmer cream look. Before we move on to basing, we're just going to get some bar red and apply that to the visors. Now with that gold undercoat, it will give it a slightly different finish to the tunic. Now for some cool scorch marks, what we're now going to do is just stab onto the shield using Corvus Black. Now it's acting like a bit of a dry brush, so we haven't removed as much of that pigment. As you can see, it's giving it a nice scorched effect. With 
with our base coats now done and our shades applied over the models, they're almost ready for the tabletop. We just need to base them. Now you can get texture base if you want to, but I'm just gonna use the stuff that's in the box set and we're just gonna paint them up and give them a nice gallo dark effect. So to start off with, we're gonna get Iron Warriors and we're just gonna coat that all over the base. With that base coat dry, we're gonna get Norn Oil and just pull that quite heavily over to that base as well. Just be mindful not to get it on the feet. Now we're gonna apply some Griffon Orange. When applying this, try to be as random as you can, otherwise your base could look a little too uniformed. And the reason why we're doing this is to give it a rusty effect or at least patches of rust. And last up, we're gonna make some oil spills and the same applies when painting the oil patches. We'll be using Rattling Grime for this and remember, less is more. And we're gonna paint the rims in Corvus Black. I'm gonna do three thin coats of this just to build up a nice smooth layer. So those breaches now are done, all that's left to do is paint that little floaty school guy and the little tractor man. Now both these little dudes have been undercoated with lead belcher. However, if you don't have lead belcher, just undercoat them with whatever undercoat you've got and then just paint them silver using one of the silvers that we've used in this video. Starting with the little tractor man, we're just gonna coat all over with some Norn oil. Then we're gonna apply some Griffon orange into those recesses to make it look nice and rusty. Then dry brush over using iron hand steel. And then finally picking out that lens with a little bit of bar red. Now we're gonna move on to the floaty school guy, also known as a guy school, and we're gonna base coat that school using screaming school. That is a lot of skulls in one sentence. With the school picked out, what we're now gonna do is pick out those brass details using Balthazar Gold. Then the yellow cables using Avalanche Sunset, the red cables using Bar Red, the black cable using Black Legion, and then heavily coat all over with some Norn Oil. And then just to rust it up like it's fellow, we're just gonna get a little bit of Griffon orange and just drop that into some of those areas at the bottom of the base. So if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe by pressing the like and subscribe button somewhere. I think it's down here somewhere. Press it down here. Now maybe you've played a few games or not, but if you wanna take up your Navis breaches to the next step, what we're now gonna do is just do a couple of highlights on them just to make them pop a little bit more. So we'll start first by using some Wild Rider Red on that tunic. What we're aiming to do here is highlight the folds or raised areas of the tunic with Wild Rider Red. Just add a little bit more punch to that yellow, what we're gonna do is highlight that or tidy back up some of those raised areas ready for the next stage. And that next stage being using Screaming Sculpt as a highlight on the edges. In most places, you can just use the edge of your brush like I'm doing here. Like with the red, pick out any blue folds with Altdorf Guard Red. Blue. <laughs> Highlight that armor using Screaming Skull. When highlighting the skin, either tidy back up with a base color or use a lighter tone. Here, over the Blood Reaver skin, we've used Night Quest or Flesh just to add some punch. Over the Catachan Flesh tone, we've highlighted it with Blood Reaver Flesh. And for the light skin tone, I've just tidied those raised areas with a little bit of Cadian Flesh tone, but if you want to, you can always use Screaming Skull for more definition. Those highlights done, our navy breaches are finished. Now I time this 
and when painting, in total, it came just under four hours to the entire kill team. So you could probably get it done over a couple of nights. Also, in this video, you don't have to give them red jackets if you want to. You can always give them blue jackets and red trousers. The options are there, it's entirely up to you. This was just me painting them in a way I really liked. And I'm really proud of them, and I think they look great. Everything we've used in this video can be bought from Element Games, so check our affiliate link in the description. Now, it doesn't cost you any extra, but it really does help support our channel. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this video and found it very useful. And also, we have a Patreon account, so please, please, please do support us on that as well. Farewell, sweet folks. I love you all. Bye-bye, and I'll see you soon in the next video.